Jesus, we bless your name right now. We honor you right now. We love you right now. We need you right now. We surrender to you right now. Lord, there is no other God like unto you. No Savior like unto you. You are the great Redeemer. And we bless your name for what you've done for us, mighty Father. Lord, today as we are here, our hearts and our expectations are upon you, O oh God. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. I just have somebody to love upon Jesus right now. And I have somebody to forget about your troubles and your problems, what is right and what is not. And just focus on Jesus for one moment. And just tell him, Lord, you are the darling of my soul. All oh, my love, all oh, my hope, all oh, my faith. It's all in you. Jesus, you are everything in everything. And without you, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. Oh, Jesus, you are all in all. We love you today. We love you today. We love you today. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I wish I had somebody who can just tell him thank you. Thank you for paying the price on the cross for me. I know I was destined for the pit of fire. But you came to my rescue. Jesus. Thank you for paying the price on the cross in my behalf. Thank you for everything you've done for me, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. All my life I live to give glory and honor to your name. For there is no other God like unto you. Lord, the glory is yours. The praise is yours. The majesty is yours. The power is yours. The blessing is yours. The riches are yours. It all belongs to you, Jesus. It's all yours, Lord. It's all yours, Lord. And even we ourselves belong to you, Lord. For we never created ourselves. It is you that made us and formed us, O oh God. The Lord, we may praise and bless your name, Papa. Receive all the honor and the adoration in our lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you right now. Father, we bless your name right now. And I feel the anointing in this place. I feel the anointing in this place. I want you to know where you are at right now. God is touching you. And just extend your hands to heaven. Just raise your hands to heaven. And just right now begin to receive his touch upon your life. Because the Lord God has come into this house. Not for anything or anyone else. But because of you. Because of you he has come in this house. Just right now begin to receive from his presence. Right now let him touch your life. Right now connect your faith to him. Let him pour into your life right now. Just receive from his presence right now. Lord, we are hungry and we are thirsty. Feel us, Lord. Feel us, Lord. Feel us today. Feel us today. Come and quench our thirst, O God. Come and feel our hunger, Lord. Grant us that we shall want no more, Jehovah God. Because in you we have been satisfied. In you, O oh God, Lord, all our needs have been met, King of glory. Father, we surrender to you. And in this service, we yield to you, O oh God. It is our desire, mighty Father, that you are taking the preeminence, Jehovah God. That each and everything and everyone in this house, O oh God, bring and give glory and honor unto you. For you alone are worthy and you deserve it, O oh God. Your kingdom is the everlasting kingdom, O oh God. Your dominion, it shall be even to the end of the ages, mighty Father. Father, we bless your name and we honor you. In this service today, let it please you, O oh God, that you are touching each and every one of us. 
that you're ministering into our lives, mighty Father. May we speak of it, O oh God, as we come from this place, that we have met with the living God, and we are never the same again. Father, thank you because you're granting it to us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say a big amen. Somebody say a bigger amen. Can you celebrate Jesus in this house? Can you celebrate Jesus in this house? Can you celebrate Jesus in this house? Isn't the Lord a good God? I mean, like, besides everything else, isn't he a good God and a loving God? Besides what the devil is doing, isn't he a good God? Hallelujah. Worthy of our praise and our adoration. Amen. I want us to give to the Lord. And I'd like you to take your offering. By which you've come to honor the Lord. Let's take it with you. If you're a tither or a partner, you have seed faith, thanksgiving, and such like, also prepare it. Maybe I can as well take you on a brief of the offerings that we give in this house, even as you're preparing your offering right on our uh, church envelope. We have several offerings that are mentioned. The tithe is the tenth of what you earn. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. And the Lord spoke about it in Math, rather Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. The one who honors him by giving him the tithe and fulfilling this commandment will also come into abundant blessings. But also we have the monthly partner and this house does need partners if you're not a partner, you can always, always fill our partnership form and partner together with this work because it is through your own giving that this house is established. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and ask them, are you a partner in this house? Just require an answer. It's not a rhetoric question. Wait for an answer. I hope they answered you. So if you're not a partner, we are kindly again asking you, partner with this work. Don't say, I have nothing to give. In the book of Philippians chapter 4, it says in the word that Paul spoke to the Macedonians and he said, you gave over and over again, not because you had. These people, they were very poor, the Philippians, yet they continued to partner with Paul. And Philippians 4, 19, Paul said, my God will supply to all your need. Hallelujah. If you want all your needs to be met, if you want to make sure you never ever have a need when it comes to meeting your expenses and your bills and such like, become a partner in God's work. Look at your neighbor and ask them, tell them, become a partner. Be a partner. Be a partner with the work. Don't be a hearer. You hear, you say, other people will partner. Somebody say, myself, I should be a partner. Amen. Tither, I'll receive that also from your hand. And just raise your offering to heaven and speak to God. And tell God something about your offering. My Father, you've blessed me, O God. You've provided in my life. I bring to you my offering as a testament of your faithfulness, of your loving kindness and your goodness in my life. I pray, my Father and God, I can't remain the same. My blessings must manifest. My heavens must remain open. Any power that is challenging my life, you must challenge it, Jehovah God. Lord, my destiny, it must manifest, oh God. I must come into the fullness of the words you've spoken over my life, Papa. Oh God, in Jesus' name, arise upon my life, Papa. Karabananamanda. As you're raising your offering to heaven, Father, I receive this offering from the hands of your people. I receive it in Jesus' name, and I declare, let the heavens be open over every life. I command it, O oh God, let the blessing come upon the lives of your people, mighty Father. Everyone that is struggling financially, I decree, their struggles have come to an end, mighty Father. Arise, Jehovah God, to expand and enlarge your people, O oh God, to the east and the west and the north and the south. May your people be blessed, our Father, and let the blessing remain upon them indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? You come from where you are. Drop offering right here in the offering basket at the front. Titus, please remain with me and partners right here. 
I'll receive it from your hand. I'll receive it. Just raise your hand to him. Speak to God. Tell him, Lord, this is what I brought you. Just raise your hands. Father, I declare it as your servant. I receive the tithe from the hands of these your sons and daughters. Lord, every other offering by which they stand before you. And I decree, may your word be fulfilled upon their lives that you will open the windows of heaven pouring us out the blessing which we shall not have room enough to contain, rebuking the devourer out of their lives, mighty Father. Lord God, establishing a blessing upon their lives, that everywhere amongst the nations of the world, they are favored, Papa. I speak and declare in this season, everything that belongs to this your people is released, Jehovah God. No power of darkness can stop it, mighty Father, but arise and show your goodness in these lives, O God. In Jesus' name we pray, say amen. God bless you as you take your seats. Uh, I'd like to ask Sunday school children to come to the front. Let me pray for you as you go to your classes. And even as they are coming, do open with me in your Bible into the book of James. Raise your hands, Sunday school. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the children by whom you've blessed us, O God. I speak and declare, let the blessing of the Lord rest upon these lives. I decree they are covered by the blood of Jesus. I speak and declare any assignment against their lives from the kingdom of darkness is cancelled and terminated. O oh God, arise. Father, establish them in their destinies. As they go to their class today, speak to them. Lord, use their teachers. Give them wisdom, O oh God, to minister into these lives. That even as they grow, Lord, they shall honor you and they will serve you all the days of their lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Say amen. God bless you. Go to your classes. Be good to your teachers. So once again, if you're right there in the book of James, and today we are speaking about the power of words. Somebody say words. In the world where we live right now, one of the most powerful things that influences the course of humanity is words or they are words by your own words you are able to encourage and strengthen somebody so that their lives are lifted and elevated and they can become great people or they can be established in the courses of their lives by words as well it is possible to criticize somebody such that they are broken. And even at times, as many of you may understand, you will find people may even commit suicide. Today, all over the world, we have many speaking people. Top on the list of those who speak. And I think by virtue of basically living in this generation, you must know concerning, especially the U.S. president, and concerning other world leaders, you will find that when they speak, there is impact that the world does take automatically. Praise God. You will find as well that even nationally in this nation, if our politicians do speak, whenever they speak, the words, they carry power to influence the course of the nation. You will find that even in your own life, some of us, we were in high school, universities, and such like places. And those who have been over you in the form of teachers and lecturers have also spoken one or two words to you. And you may have seen that either positively or negatively, their words had an impact upon your life. Seated here also are those who know very well concerning what your parents or the authority figure in your life has spoken to you. And those words to some of us who are seated here right now, they are still ringing in our minds because they took impact upon your life. Praise the Lord. Words are powerful. Words 
carry influence. In fact, one of my definitions for words is that they are containers of power. Praise God. Based on this, I want us to speak and to hear what God is speaking to us today concerning words because your words are powerful. Look at your neighbor and tell them you have powerful words. Now, go with me in the same book of James and chapter number three. I want us to read from there. Let God speak to us today because if we are not of understanding, we will miss much good that God has intended to release into our lives because of what we speak and how we speak. And so, if you're there in the book of James, I want to read chapter number three. And it says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to breed all the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm, with us whoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we cast men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. That a fountain sent forth at the same time, rather the same place, sweet water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt, salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let us pray. Fathers, we hearken to your word. We are surrendered to you. Lord, speak to our hearts and our lives, mighty God. And through this word, Lord, direct us, each one, to our destinies. Father God, any areas of our lives that we need to come in, back into order, O oh God, bring us into order, O oh King of glory. And Lord, every command that Jehovah God must proceed from our lives, teach us, O oh God, concerning these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Can you say amen? All right, again, coming to the word that I speak to us today, my message to you is ruling the tongue. Because God wants you to rule your tongue. And he wants the church to be in the place of authority, our tongue and our mouth should be able to command the things of the kingdom of God upon the earth. And that it is not happening, it is not pleasing to the Father. Praise the Lord. The scripture we have just read, I think you can see clearly how James, the apostle, begins to speak concerning how our words and our tongues can be of great influence upon the earth. And he lists from the top to the bottom things that happen in the lives of people who are in the church. When James was speaking, and this is James, the Lord's brother, because he had five brothers, I believe, and uh, 
he does speak um, uh, concerning the power uh, of words and also the influence of the tongue. One of the things that I want to mention even as we're getting started is that the tongue of a Christian is the indicator of their spiritual health. As a child of God, if you look at the scripture which we have just read, and that's James chapter 3, and if I can just point you to verse number 2, it says, For in many things we offend all, if any man offendeth not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. In other words, anyone who can be able to control their tongue, they can prove that they have arrived at the place of spiritual maturity. Maturity is not mentioned because you operate in spiritual gifts, because people can hear you when you prophesy, they can see the kind of miracles you manifest and such like things. It is not in those things. It is not in the humility that you may demonstrate and people say, oh, such a humble person, they must definitely be a mature Christian. No, it is not necessarily in these things. But when we come to see your tongue, how you are able to rule it, how you are able to control it, this will tell us how spiritually mature you are. Praise the Lord. Your words and how you speak, they reveal the kind of Christian that you are. And I want us to understand because according to the Father, if we are not watchful as his children, our own mouth is able to drop us into the pit of hell by itself. Indeed, as I speak to you right now, there are many people who are in hell because of misuse of their tongue and also misuse of their words. I believe God is speaking us to us today because he wants us to tame and he wants us to rule our tongues. If you are able to use your tongue very well, it will bless your life. And if you don't know how to use your tongue, you will destroy your life and you destroy the lives of many, many people. Glory to God. I'll give you a good example. See now our politicians right now. One single word they can speak and the whole nation is impacted upon. Am I speaking the truth? Even you in the church, you can find yourself busy. Your king is Jesus. But now you have another smaller king, politician. You flow with them. Hallelujah. If your king is Jesus, let him remain to be Jesus. I didn't hear your amen. Because the word of God says that we are now citizens of heaven above. And it says we've been delivered from the rudiments or the elements of this world. And it says we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And it says, therefore, if this is your position, now begin to seek the things of Christ right from there in the heavenly places where he is seated. In other words, what things are of interest to the Lord Jesus, they become your own interest as well. Praise the Lord. God wants us to be children of understanding. In the word of God. It does speak of many who came into trouble because of their tongues, because of words that they spoke. I think very clearly you do understand concerning the children of Israel that by their own mouth, when they saw that the giants were huge and the uh, ten spies, they brought the report and they said, well, that land is serious and we are not able to take it because there are giants right there and this is what it is. And the people were afraid and they said, now we are going to appoint captains and go back to Egypt where we remember the watermelons and the cucumbers and the onions. All the things I don't like. Well, watermelons I like. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, how could such simple things influence an entire nation that they left the grapes and all the produce of the promised land that is Canaan and they went back or they decided to go back to Egypt. And the Lord said, as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do to you. Indeed, I believe in the word of God. This is one of the most powerful instances where men spoke and God settled their fate. Your words, the Bible says, they can either redeem you or they can also condemn your life. And it does not matter that you're a child of God. You say, I'm born again. I'm a child of the king. Surely my life should be blessed. My life should be moving forward. If you don't carry understanding, read your Bible, Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Somebody say lack of knowledge. 
what you don't understand, it will destroy you. Even though you belong to the Lord. Look now, you are born again. You serve the Lord Jesus. You say, I pray. You say, I work for God and all of these things. But if you don't have understanding, if you don't have knowledge that God wants you to have, you will still be destroyed, yet you are in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Look now at Lazarus. This man. He was a kingdom child. Yet the Bible says, all his life on the earth, the man was living as a pauper. And he was sickly. And all of these things, they happened to him. I don't believe any covenant child of God should live this kind of a lifestyle. But I am certain that there are things that Lazarus did not understand in himself. That put him in that place. When he died, he went to heaven. Yet his life on earth, it was a terror. I pray to God that such will not be your life in Jesus' name. You will live a great destiny upon the earth. You will live a powerful destiny upon the earth. Why is your amen so weak now? Say, my father, I repent. What are you repenting about? Lack of faith. How did I know your amen was absent? Hallelujah. People came into trouble because of their tongue. Sarah was told by Abraham, lie and say you are my sister. And unless God has spoken to Abimelech, Abimelech would have done something that was not right. And at the same time, there would be trouble to Abraham, trouble to Sarah, and trouble to Abimelech. But God had to step in. Look now, the man is making a mess. If God didn't step in, he would not have been saved in that situation. The destiny of the nations would have been impacted upon because of the tongue. Because Sarah lied. She said, ah, the man, he is my brother. Of course, she was his half-sister because of the relation of their parents. But this was not warranted because the truth of the matter was Sarah was Abraham's wife. Amen. Moses also brought impact to himself because the Bible sp speaks and says when God said you will now speak to the rock, the man began to curse and to speak so many things. Here now, you rebels, master, we bring you water from this rock and he smote the rock. And because of that, the Lord said, you will not enter into the promised land. Somebody say words. Words, they can really impact upon your life. Peter also, in Matthew chapter 26, and verses 69 to 75, the Bible does speak that the man also, when he was confronted, and they say, surely also you are a disciple to this man. He said, I swear I don't know the man. And many other things the man said. Impact upon his life. When the temptation came knocking, he denied his very Lord. Words can impact upon your life. So I want to share with you some truths about the, about the power of words. And we shall move on. I believe these are necessary things that we must understand. The first thing I want to say is that the right words when spoken, they carry much power. If you're a child of God who knows to speak a right, you will be counted as a powerful person. Job, Job chapter 6 verse 24 rather. It says, teach me and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words. If you are a child of God who knows and understands to use your tongue very well, they will carry power that will change lives of men upon the earth. You will become an influential person. As it is right now, some of the people whom you value very much, you don't value them because maybe they have so much money and so many things that you could count in their own lives. But most of the people as a child of God that you value, it is because of what proceeds from them. It is because of words that are coming from them. It is because of what deposit they have inside them and they are willing to speak it out. Anyone who carries the right words will also carry much power. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, the Bible says that God created or framed the world in which we are in by the words or by the power of words. The Bible says, if you read clearly in Genesis chapter 1, it says, and God said, let there be, and as you follow through, you find, and it was. He said, let, let there be, and it was, and so on. In other words, 
This was showing us that God himself created his own world. He brought into existence the things that he desires by the power of his own words. Somebody say words. Now, I want you to understand, if this is whom our God is as well, it is also important for us as his children to carry the same kind of a spirit because we know that we are created in the image of God. Amen? We carry his blueprint in ourselves. We carry his DNA in ourselves. And since we are his children, if God could frame his own world by the power of his words, then he wants you to know that you yourself also, you can create your world at any time if you speak the right kind of words. Glory to God. Now, some people you're here and there's some pain that you're experiencing. I want you to know the healing anointing is here. You will be healed. You will not leave this place with any pain in Jesus' name. I see the healing anointing. It's ready to touch somebody in this house. God spoke into existence things that were not there. I personally, as I've been walking with the Lord, I came to understand the power of words much early in my salvation because I saw that as I was taught and I began to utilize the power of words. I'm one person, you will not find me speaking idle words. And if you find me with an idle word, please rebuke me very seriously because I want to be corrected. Hallelujah. I will not do it because I understand. I saw that when I speak things, they happen. I command things, they happen. I prophesy, it happens. And I began to understand. Also, now I can create anything I desire through my own words. Somebody say words. I do not understand how a child of God can say my life is in too much struggle, too much of afflictions and such like, and not understand that if you open your mouth and just speak the right thing, everything in your life, it can change. You are in the image of God. You are in the image of God. You are in the image of God. What God does, you can do, and you'll have the same results. Ah, you need to understand this. If you know to speak the right thing, nothing in your life can remain the same. Even money. I taught some of you in this house that you can command money, money shall hear you and it will come. In fact, right now as you're seated, you say, money, I command you, hear my voice. Come to me now in the name of Jesus. Say, money, I command you, come to me now in the name of Jesus. Say it again, money, I command you, come to me now in the name of Jesus. Say a big amen. By that kind of a confession, because I want you to know that anything we have on this earth, they all have ears. Hallelujah. It's not only people that have ears. I tell you, that's why the Lord said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will speak to this mountain and you will tell it, be moved and be cast into the sea and it shall obey you and nothing will be impossible to you. What he was saying is that the mountain has ears and is waiting for you to speak to it. That situation in your life right now that is really threatening you, you stress yourself, you say, my goodness, this situation is so hard, it's so tough. It has ears. If you can speak to it, and not just speaking like, let me try this thing the apostle was saying, but you release your faith fully on that word. Hallelujah. It shall obey you. It shall move. The situation will change if there is sickness in your body. So if I say, oh, I feel so, uh, so much pain in my body. Oh, let me sit here. The worship thing, they, they can sing, but I just sit here because there is so much pain in my body. You are confessing the wrong thing. The word to speak is that this, the pain in my body is leaving me right now. I have been created as healed. I have been created as whole. And sickness has no permission to be in my body. Therefore, sickness, leave me now. It shall obey you. It will leave you. How you sit now? Say, let me look at my situation. Oh, I need somebody to feel sorry for me. So people gather and they start feeling sorry for you. Please, I am not among that number. Hallelujah. But I've been the number that will tell you, arise, speak to the situation, command the situation. It shall change. It's got ears. If there's any demon, the Lord say, any spirit that is assigned against you, he said, you will bind it on earth and it shall be bound in heaven. Unless you don't believe your own God. Hallelujah. But it says in the word that let God be true and every man a liar. God does not lie. If he said you bind it, it's bound, it is bound. If he said you lose, it is loose, it is loose. 
Hallelujah. That's why you can lose anything that you need in your life. Don't say, it's not happening. Don't say, I don't have anyone. Oh, I wish I had a, a powerful, powerful person in my life. I wish I had a rich uncle. Rich uncles and aunties, you don't need them. You need Jesus in your life. And Jesus is enough. He is much more than that, your uncle. Indeed, what your uncle has, Jesus gave it to them. And he can remove it any time and put it in your hands. Hallelujah. And some of the people you depend upon, they're actually using your own virtues. They're not using what is theirs. If you pray so hard, you say, my father, anyone using my virtues, release it, release it. I'm telling you, they will go down and you start rising up. Hallelujah. And I command it in this service. Anyone operating on your virtues, from today, let them release it. Let them release it. Let them release it now in the name of Jesus. Take back what is yours. Take back what is yours. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you think, oh, Jesus, where are you in my life? You never saw me. You never moved in my life. But the Lord has already blessed your life. It's only somebody next to you who is nutting it from your life. And they are using it. I decree they must release what is yours. Anyone operating on your health, you carry sicknesses. You have medical cabinet in your house. You become junior doctor. You say, nowadays, you know, I have graduated. They ask which university. You say, since all the sicknesses I've had, I'm a doctor. I can treat your life. Please don't treat me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't want to graduate as a doctor. Let me graduate as a spiritual doctor. Hallelujah. As somebody who can command situations, I don't need to go into that medicine. I need to go into the power of the Holy Ghost. May God's power begin to locate your life. That everything they did in your life, it shall be reversed. It shall be overturned. And what is yours, it shall remain to be yours. You have power in your own words. Understand it and use it. Let God arise in your life. God is waiting for your words. He's waiting for you to speak. But sometimes as Christians, we are lazy. You say, now, man of God, but if I speak now, is it really going to happen? You see, that's your problem now. Because sometimes you want to be lazy. Look at your neighbor and tell them, laziness is not accepted. Come on, tell them laziness is not accepted in the kingdom of God. It is not. Don't say, if God is blessing my life, let him bless me. I'm right here. I'm telling you, you will become a skeleton right there, waiting for God to bless you. Because every blessing God will release in your life, it is conditional. Hallelujah. He said, if you obey my voice, I will bless you. I bless your bread. I bless your water. I bless everything in your life. Hallelujah. Blessings that God gives to us, they are conditional. There's an if. If is a conditional word. It says there's something you must do so you can receive what God has for you. But in the church, sometimes you want, let me just be blessed. I mean, like God, if he's a good God, let him bless my life. Yes, he will bless you. But there are certain things you must command yourself. Hallelujah. <sighs> May money begin to locate somebody from today. Let me create some money for somebody in this house. Hallelujah. Because I know I can create. Hallelujah. I command it in Jesus' name. For whoever has the faith for it, I release financial miracles in your life. From this moment, I decree right now, money must reign in your life. It must locate your life. I command it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Now, hear me. Testimonies are coming of financial miracles. By next Sunday, they shall be here in this house. It's not depending on you. It's depending on me. Hallelujah. Because I release my faith right now. I spoke to you in this house. I told my son, command money. He must come to me. I said, give me 100,000. He said, I don't have the money. I said, yes, I want 100,000. This is what I want you to do. Speak the money. I'll just receive it. He said, ah, this thing, I've never done it. I said, do it. I commanded him. Eventually he did it. I said, now I'm going to use my faith. You release the money to me. But it's my faith working. It was not four days. I had the 100,000. Hallelujah. All of it. And it's not the only one. Hallelujah. Not the only one. So if there's no money in your life, you command it. You command it. Hallelujah. It's not saying that you sit here and say, money, I command you. As I'm walking, come and locate me. Of course, you also have to be active in your life. Hallelujah. It says very well that a man shall be blessed by the work of their hands. God will bless the work of your hands. But as you're working and as you're commanding, money will locate your life. Are you understanding me? I also want to make this statement. When, rather, the words we speak are so important that God will take every idle word we speak into account. 
I said I'm, saying, I'm speaking to you some truths about words. This is how important words are to God. Any idle word you speak, like you say, oh, I, I didn't mean it. I was just saying it. No, to God, it is counted. That's why it's not allowed for a child of God to make some silly, funny kind of jokes. Hallelujah. Don't say, I was just joking. You're saying, man of God, where is it coming from? Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. There is no idle word. You say, I, I was just speaking. This was not meant to be part of it. It is counted because the kingdom of darkness will count it. You say, oh, no, no, no. I, I was just talking about sickness. I didn't mean that, you know, this should happen. I was just talking about that. Some people, they speak, they say, oh, I'm tired of this life now. When they are speaking like that, those words are picked by the kingdom of darkness. The Bible says your words will justify you and your words will condemn you. In other words, your words are able to bless your life, to move you forward, and your words are able also to break down your life. This is not just about going to heaven and say, oh, when we go to heaven, then God will open the books and I'll hear all the words I was speaking and I'll begin to understand, oh, yes, so these are the words that I spoke and therefore now this is the judgment concerning me. No, not just that, but also here on earth, you are justified by your words. Negative things you've been speaking, they've been condemning your own life. So you are the one cursing your life. When God said, we should bless our lives. Take note of every word you speak. Become a child of God who says, Lord, help me. You know, David said that, set a guard over my lips. Praise God. Set a guard over my lips. I don't want to speak anything idle. I don't want to speak anything that will cost me my destiny. Because one word you can speak and it's done. For Israel, they said, we don't want to go to that promised land. And God said, it is done. Even they come the next day. They say, now we want to go. The Lord said, you shall not go. If you try to go, you will come into fire. The matter was settled. The word that they spoke, it judged them. So the next day they say, okay, now we are going to fight. And they went. And the Bible says they were beaten seriously before their enemies. And Moses said to them, well, didn't I tell you, you shall not go. They did not understand it. You are justified through your words. You overcome through your words. Romans chapter 3 verse 4. This is what the Bible says. Yet let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you might be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. What is the word of God saying to us? It's telling us that we overcome through the words which we speak. Satan will come out against you. Look at the word again. It says, but let, yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. Let God be true, but every man a liar. In other words, Satan will come with lies to you and he will want you to believe them. He will tell you, do you think you're blessed? Do you think you're favored? Do you think you're healed? Do you think you're strong? Do you think you're anointed? He will ask you so many questions as he did it in the Garden of Eden. In fact, Satan has nothing else to release against you to stop you except the lie. That's why any child of God that is founded, is grounded in the word, that child of God, they can never be stopped. They are solid, they are firm, they are strong. You can never break that person down. Hallelujah. Be a child of God who loves the word, who eats the word. Because when the truth of God is in you, you will be able to beat the devil anytime. That's why when he came to Jesus, he said, now command this stone to become bread. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And there also he defeated Satan. Hallelujah. He was. They will justify you. They will condemn you. But Satan will want you to believe the lie. Anything that the devil sends to you to stop you, it is in the form of a lie. That's why when you know the truth, you are shielded. The Bible says also holding the shield of faith. Somebody say shield of faith. 
when you have the shield of faith, which also is connected to the word of God, because when you stand by the word and you say, well, that sickness is not my portion, because according to the word, it says, I am the healed of the Lord. You have just raised your shield of faith, and that sickness will fall by the wayside. Praise God. The devil is trying to put poverty in you. You say, well, it says my God will supply to all my need according to his riches and glory. You just raise the shield of faith against every attack of poverty on your life. Learn how to use your shield. But how will you raise the shield of faith when there is no word in you? How will you know how to counter the devil? It says in the word, let God be true. But you will be justified in your sayings. You will be justified in your sayings. That's what it says in that book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 4. And might overcome. Look at that word. You may be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. So the word that comes from your mouth is used to judge your life. Say my words are the judgment that is set on my life. So when you speak a word that is in accordance with the word of God, that word will counter anything the devil says about your life. And as you are being judged because you spoke something, you said something. Somebody, I'll give you two examples. One person says, well, I'm sick. By those words, the judgment is set. That sickness will locate them. Another one says... I'm the healed of the Lord. By those words, the judgment is set that the person is healed. They are justified. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and ask them, neighbor, what kind of words are you speaking? I'll give you another verse. Revelation 12 verse 11. This verse shows us that we overcome through the words that we speak. And it says what? It says, and they overcame him, that is Satan, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony. There is the word of the testimony which you testify when you stand before God's people and you say, this is my testimony. But... There is also the testimony which comes from the testament, hallelujah, which comes from the covenant which you have been in, joined into through the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of the covenant, we have the word that has been spoken to us because every covenant must have words. You know it very well when you go to sign a contract, there is the print. Many times fine print. And many of us, we never ever bother to read those words. Eh? These are Check box there. I have read the terms and agreements. You check it very fast. You're wondering, you're saying, me, with all this, my Kidogo time, I read through these things for one hour. I'm not reading it. And because you don't read it, something will happen. If it's something that has you to be charged online, you'll be charged. You say, why are you charging me? Didn't you read the fine print? They say that this and that will happen when this and that happens. Every covenant has words together with it. Now, the covenant we are in right now, it has words, and you have it in your New Testament. And it says that we overcome or we overcame him by the word of our testimony. Which means what? When you begin to testify what the truth of God speaks about your life, you are resisting the kingdom of darkness. You are resisting Satan. You are telling him, no, you can't do this in my life. According to the word of the testimony, this is what it says. Therefore, you must flee. You must leave my life. I tell you the truth. Satan cannot oppose a child of God who can raise up the word and challenge him. And I'll tell you something. Right now, any situation that is bothering you right now, there is a word in your Bible that speaks about that situation. God has a word for everything that is challenging us. Now, all you need to do is to open that Bible. Go into the fine print. Don't be a child of God who says, well, we'll go to church. The man of God will preach to us and will speak to us. Then everything will be okay. No. 
church is okay. We shall read the word. But in your own private time, you need to know what does the word, or rather, what does the testimony say? What does the testament say? What are the terms of the covenant have been brought into? Because right there you see that sickness is not your portion. Healing is your portion. You say, oh, it says right here, I'm supposed to be healed. Therefore, I command any devil that is sending sickness in my life, leave me now. It says right here that peace is supposed to be my portion. And therefore, I command every power troubling my mind, troubling my peace, leave me now. Hallelujah. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. What is your testimony? Are you testifying? Are you speaking? Are you commanding something? Is there anything you are countering the kingdom of darkness with? Is there anything you're saying that according as I've read the word, Satan, you have no authority. He says right here that they will command demons and they will come out. Cast out spirits. They will crush serpents. It says right there. So every serpent that has come out against me, I crush it under my feet. There is no power in hell that can contest with the word of God that you can confess. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, is there any word you are speaking about? We can complain all we want to complain, but God has given us the instruments of power. We have them in the kingdom of God. Even salvation, it comes through a combination of faith and the word. I'm speaking to you about truths. On the power of words. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says what? It says that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And verse 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So as a child of God, I can't even be saved if I don't know the power of of words it is important even the lord spoke and said that if you don't confess me before men i will not confess you before my father in heaven if you don't say i know this jesus i love this jesus there is no way god can jesus can speak about you before god he said you denied me therefore also i deny you praise god hallelujah what salvation you believe in your heart, but you speak. You say, Jesus is Lord. When you say, Jesus is Lord, salvation from that moment, it comes into your life. And this word salvation, I want you to understand it. Because it's not just the salvation we think. It is the Greek word, sozo. And this word salvation, it means to be healed. It means to be made whole. It means to be delivered. It means to be set free. It means protection. And it means to be saved. All that is encompassed into the word saved. So for a child of God to be born again and to say, well, I'm saved. It doesn't matter that I feel a bit sickly, but it's okay since I'll go to heaven. I think I'll be okay. No, the word salvation, it includes your healing as well. The moment you got saved, you deserve as well to be healed. The moment you got saved, you deserve as well to be delivered. Deliverance is yours. It's not something you ask God, please, please, please give me deliverance. No. As you are in the kingdom, you say, Father, it says in your word that as I believe upon you, anyone who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered, shall be healed, shall be protected, shall be made whole. Hallelujah. It is a total restoration of the whole life. Of the child of God. But take note that all these things, they come by confession. Somebody say confession. In fact, in your Bible, I want you to underline the word confess. And the word confession, if it is underlinable. On verse 9 and verse number 10. Underline those words. Or highlight the words. It is the confession. It, when you speak it, when you say, I am the healed of the Lord. Then the matter is settled in your life. Amen. This word, faith. Faith, because we see, it says, if you believe and if you confess. Faith, it means to be steadfast. To be unwavering. 
in what you confess with your mouth. You stand firm. There's something you have believed. You must be unwavering. You must be steadfast. You cannot say, I have faith. Today you say, I'm healed. Then tomorrow you say, well, doctor, actually right now, I feel, I feel the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. I don't see how anything can change. Just help me, doctor. Give me something. Give me something. I want some medicine now. No, you cannot say I'm healed today. Tomorrow you're not healed. You cannot say I'm favored today. Tomorrow you're not favored. You cannot say I'm financially blessed today. Tomorrow you're not financially blessed. So you go about saying, man, this money thing, I don't know where it comes from because everybody seems to have it, but I don't have it. That's the sure way you never have money. Even you don't have it. That is the time you speak. Hallelujah. Remember, God created by his words. So anything you need in your life, if you can speak the word. I told you at the beginning that words are containers of power. When you speak it, you have just sent power into the spiritual realm. I like what Creflo Dollar said. He said that when you release your faith by words like this, it's as if you sent your fishing hook, road and line, into the realm of the spirit. And you pick something and you pluck it and bring it into your physical world. So if you are not speaking, there is nothing you are fishing for. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, it's time to go fishing. Amen. Somebody, you need to get something that you need in your life. Command it in the realm of the spirit. Now, good things as well as bad things, they come into being or into manifestation because of the words that we speak. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 to 37, listen to the words of the Lord Jesus. He says, O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, brings forth good things, and the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. I want you to know that words are things. Say it with me. Words are things. Understand that. Verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. First and foremost, the mouth cannot speak until the heart carries abundance. Abundance. In your heart, you need to have an abundance of things that you can speak. Fill your heart. Fill your heart with the word so that when you open your mouth, you're not bringing out negativity. What you're speaking is positive. What you're speaking is life. What you're speaking is transformation. Until your heart is filled, your mouth cannot speak it. Don't say, well, from tomorrow, I'll be speaking, speaking, speaking the word of God. No, first begin to fill your heart with the word of God. Fill your heart with the good things. So, if we look at verse 35, a good man can be defined by good things that are put in his heart. Amen? Amen? Because a good man is defined by bringing out of his heart good treasure and good things. But an evil man is defined by bringing out of his heart evil treasure and evil things. If you read the book of Proverbs, Solomon does speak there. And he says that as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you think in your heart, that is who you are. As you think in your heart, that is who you will be. But take note that when your heart is filled with certain things, the same things will come out in your words. So in other words, what Solomon did not say in that verse is that the one who is thinking in his heart will begin to speak the same things by his mouth and that is what he shall be. Praise God. A good man will bring good things out of the treasure in his heart. Somebody say good things. Say it again, good things. So that means if I speak, good things can manifest in my life. They can even manifest in somebody else's life. You know your words can change somebody's life. 
Somebody can be so down and feeling like, oh, I'm just about, about to give up. And you speak to them and say, oh, no, be of good cheer. The Lord is helping you. I see God rising up to your help. Very soon the situation will change. And they will suddenly square up and say, well, I believe it's getting better. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, become an encourager. So words are things. Because the Lord said, how can you being evil speak good things? Take note of that word things. If you can underline it, underline it. So when I speak, I'm not just releasing words. I'm releasing things. That's why in this house I will tell you, you are a man must be strong. Because when I say God is about to change somebody's life, it's not for you to look because you have to understand. In the realm of the spirit, that is already a thing that has been released. And the one who says it is mine, with their amen, they receive it in their lives. Hallelujah. So you need to, to see, don't just see in the physical like, oh, you just said something. No, see it as in the spirit, a release that has been made. And you sign it with your amen. Glory to God. Ah. If you love your tongue, which means you choose to use it well, you will come into great gain. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. This verse, you know it very well. Some of you, since you were born, you've been quoting this verse very well. But I want you to understand it. It says what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Look now, God is saying, the course of your life, you are the one who will determine it. You can either speak death and your life will go down, or you can speak life and your life shall be lifted up. But he says what? The one who loves it will eat the fruit of it. In other words, the one who loves the tongue. Praise God. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you love your tongue? You may say yes, but do you really love your tongue? You may say, I, I love my tongue. When I brush my teeth, I also brush my tongue. That's not what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. And if you don't brush your tongue, maybe it's time you started. Amen. Well, those are doctor matters. I'm not a professional doctor, so don't count me on that. However, I'm speaking about loving your tongue. Now, we know that anything that you love, you treat it very well. Right? You cannot say, well, I love this person. Then you slap them. You tell them, that is me loving you. They say, now I know you hate me because the way you are treating me. So when you love something, you treat it well. When you love that, your nice outfit. Even when you give it to whoever does your laundry, you tell them, be careful with this one. If it, was, if it gets damaged as a small part of it like this, that's the day they get fired. Say now, from this moment, we cannot connect anymore. Praise God. What you love, you take care of it. So when you love your tongue, you must know, how can I take care of this tongue? How can I treat it well? How can I use it well? How can I employ it to bless my life? To bless other people's lives. You cannot say you love your tongue and you use it many times you're speaking negativity. When people are cursing, you're also cursing. Look now. People are cursing in the nation. You're also amongst those who are cursing. Instead of saying this nation will stand. This nation will live. This nation will move forward. God is helping us in these kind of troubles and so on. You're busy saying, you see now? You see now? Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, be delivered. Amen. Love your tongue. If you love it, if you treat it well, if you use it well, then you will eat the fruit of that tongue. You will eat the fruit and the fruit shall be good because he says concerning the fruit of the lips. Whoever loves his tongue will eat the fruit of the lips. You love it. How do you use your tongue? James said, how can blessing and cursing come from the same place? Now, with the same tongue, you are cursing men. You curse them properly. Once you are done cursing them, you enter the house of God. And you raise your hands. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And God is looking at you. Now you tell me, how does God see you when you do that? Five minutes ago, somebody say five minutes. You are busy doing something else. 
Now also you're blessing the Lord. Because says these things, they ought not to be so. The tongue is a small organ. It's small like this. But it sets on fire the whole course of nature. That's what the word of God says. You know your own tongue can destroy your whole family. You one person. You say one word and everybody will fall by that word. You know it sometimes. Maybe your dad or your mom, they spoke that. Your grandma, your granddad, they spoke that. Your uncle, your auntie, they spoke that. And everything went haywire after that word in that household. But one word as well, it can heal the entire family. You can say, look now, why are we fighting? Are we not one family? Let's all come together. Let's see how we can solve this situation. And everybody listening to you, they will be healed. Praise the Lord. Use your words for healing. This is what God is wanting. Even in a church, like where we are right now, one person with one word, they can set the whole church on fire. Hallelujah. And one person, they can heal the entire church. Praise God. What are you speaking? What are you releasing from your words? Are you watchful with your tongue? Or do you just speak? Utter. Utter. It says the tongue is an unruly evil. And it is full of deadly poison. That one in your mouth, the one that you put cake on it, and you say, I like this thing. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for cakes. Am I the only one who blesses God for cakes? Do I have witnesses in this house? Hallelujah. And sweet things. Because God says, I will satisfy your mouth with good things. Amen? That's why bitter herbs, I don't agree. But this is me, hallelujah. It's not you. Uh, <laughs> They, they try to make me take green smoothie. My goodness, I tried that thing. I tried many times. It does not work. <laughs> it doesn't work for me. But I can eat fruits. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you, you, you like that. But it says what? God will satisfy your mouth with good things. Amen. And may you receive them in your life in the name of Jesus. That word must come to pass. But now again, the Bible says, same tongue is full of deadly poison. You see now the way you're seated. You look holy, you look blessed, you look wonderful and lovely. Amen? The Spirit of God is on your life. Amen? But here the tongue in your mouth, it can burn everybody in this church. Your mouth. Somebody say my mouth. Deadly poison. If you are not able to breathe on it, because the Bible says that that tongue, when you use it, is able to take nature in one direction and take it in the other direction. It says it is just like the rudder in the ship and it's also like the bit, the sugar bit. They tie it on a rope, put it in the mouth of the horse. When they move it like this, the horse says, I like that. It moves in that direction. It moves in the other direction. It is the same. It's a small thing. A small piece of sugar like this is moving the whole horse in another direction. Small, like this, on the tongue. Small, round thing or cross thing in a ship. Yet it is moving the whole ship that is massive in another direction. That is the same way your tongue is. It can move your life. It can move your family. It can move other people's lives. The way you use it, it will determine how it will help people or it will destroy lives. God says death and life are on your tongue. Now, the Bible says what? It says that the tongue of the just, it is a wholesome tree. If you say you're a child of God, your tongue cannot be used to destroy people's lives. It will be used as a blessing. Praise God. I was speaking to the prophet, the one who just left, and... Uh, well, I think tomorrow you should be traveling. Uh, and you're saying to me, especially when it comes to words, somebody can come to you and bring to you something that is a negative word. And he was asking me a question. You receive the word. You take the word and go and maybe take it somewhere else. The focus is you. Now, his question to me was, the one who received that negative word, somebody say negative, that means it's not something pleasant to be spoken about. It's not something to rejoice about. The one who brought that word and the one who received the word, who is the bad person? Is it the first one 
or the second one? Both of them. Or the first one? I've heard somebody saying the first one. Now he began to make me understand that now somebody has something negative to say and they have spoken it to you. Yes, it is true. Both of you are wrong. Or yes, both are, let's use the word sin, in sin. But also understand that the second person is actually much worse than the first person. Is what you're saying to me. I say, how is it now? And he was explaining. Because in the first instance, the one who brought the negative report, by the time the second person was hearing that word, they should have been able to rebuke the first person and say, I will not receive that from you. Hallelujah. But that they received it. There's a verse that I meant to read there. It talks about gossip. Hallelujah. And that's the wrong use of the tongue. And it says that when gossip is being given, it's like choice food that melts in the mouth. And when it goes down to the belly, you feel so nice. Hallelujah. You know your most favorite food? Huh. Gossip is like that. When you are receiving it, it feels like that. It feels good. When somebody says, I have something to tell you. Now you sit down. You stop everything. Even you are praying. It's text. 911. Is it 911? 411. You stop praying. You say, Tell me what is it that you have to say? Why? Because gossip is tantalizing. Somebody say tantalizing. It's a very hard word. If you can say it, you're blessed. Hallelujah. And the prophet now was speaking to me. Now, the one who started and the one who received it, the second person is in bigger error. Bigger error question to you. Do you entertain gossip? And when you receive it, what do you do with it? Because if you're not watchful about the tongue, you will use your tongue not to be a blessing, but to be a curse. Praise God. Let me show you something from the word. Something that the Lord Jesus spoke. Open your Bible, book of Matthew, chapter 15. See, I'm running out of time. I'm just about to get into prayer still have other things to say. But I believe God will give us grace. Matthew 15 verse 17 I want to add this to you. Your words have the power to defile your spirit and your body. Now, Matthew 15 do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drought. Verse 18. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. Verse 19. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, these are the things which defile a man. Praise the Lord. Understand, it is possible that you can be defiled by your words. There are some things you can speak, you can utter, and they defile you. What we talk about when you say defilement, that means your spirit man is defiled. It means even sometimes your soul man is defiled. It means even your physical man gets defiled. It is possible you can do that. Now understand, as long as your spirit is defiled, you cannot stand to minister as a servant of God. Praise God. And also, you cannot stand to minister to God as a priest. You cannot stand in the place of prayer. You cannot stand in the place of worship. Because God will look at you and he will say, yes, you are offering this to me, but it is not coming out of purity. There has been defilement. And I spoke to you that there is how you can use your tongue. And when you speak certain things, your tongue becomes rendered powerless. That's why you can stand before demons and you can say, you power, I command you break and leave. And the power will tell you, I am not leaving. As a matter of fact, you are the one who will leave now. And the next moment you are being delivered by the demon. 
Uh, they go and give testimony in hell how they delivered you. It's a shame. Praise the Lord. If you want to carry power as a child of God, you must watch your tongue. Because once your tongue becomes defiled, God cannot use you and you cannot carry power. You can't command in the spirit. Your prayers, when you pray, the devil will say, that prayer, I counter it now. It cannot go anywhere. Because heaven will look to see what the devil is saying. Is it true or not? Read your Bible. It says in the same book of Revelation chapter 12 that the accuser of our brethren stands to accuse us day and night. Can you say day and night? So it does not matter that you say now since the daytime prayers are not working i shall come to nighttime prayers so you don't sleep three hours from 12 to 3 you are praying and firing prayer points every witch doctor fire 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 i'm telling you unless you are purified on your tongue much of the prayers you pray they will still not carry impact you want power in your prayer life Watch your tongue. If any man is able to breed all the tongue, then the same man has become perfect. If you can watch your tongue, you become perfect. Don't defile your spirit. Now let me show you how you're defiling your spirit by your words. In the same verse, look at verse 19. I want to mention three things in verse 19 that shows your words will defile your spirit. One, evil thoughts evil thoughts. Remember I told you what you think in your mind will eventually come out in your words. In fact if I want to know what kind of a person you are you may be quiet for a long time but I'll just sit and wait and listen to you. I'll keep on listening. I'll keep on listening. When I hear something coming out of your mouth I know okay now I know what kind of a person this person is. Evil thoughts. The second one right there is false witness. You can find it towards the end. And the third one is blasphemies. False witness is the lie. You see something but when you go to report it, it comes out in another way. Praise the Lord. They were basically slapped. But you say, now let me tell you what happened. When they said those things, they received a slap. They received kicks. I saw them being thrown out of their house. And all of things. False witness. You defile your spirit. God cannot receive from you. And God cannot use you either. Blasphemy. Speaking many things. Even against God. And even using the name of God in vain. Blasphemies. They will defile you. But all these things, as they're listed there, they defile the person. So it doesn't matter how great you are. It doesn't matter who you are and what position you carry. As long as you're not able to bridle your words, as long as you cannot control your tongue, you bring defilement into your own life. Many of God's children are defiled not because they did this and they did that, because of things that they spoke out of their mouth. Understand, in the realm of the spirit, there is how your spirit man can be seen. Physically, we see you smartly dressed, looking good, smiling, and everything else. But in the spirit, there is another testimony concerning you. Now, if you have been defiling yourselves by your own words, in the spirit, that's how you look like. That's why the devil cannot respect you. Because when you stand before the devil, he does not see your physical. He doesn't see how fierce you are. He doesn't see how powerful you are. He doesn't see how you have a great voice and everything else. He does not see all those things. He only sees who you are in the spirit. Who you really are. That's why he can respond to you and tell you, please, you cannot deal with me. Leave me alone. Because he can see certain things are not in order in that life. Praise God. Watch your tongue. Check your tongue. Make sure your tongue is a fruit of life. Make sure your tongue is a channel of blessing. These are the things that God wants us to do. Quickly, let me speak to you certain things that will tell you you are using your tongue wrongly and will come into prayer. Number one, when you swear, you are using your tongue wrongly. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. 
For the person who wants to love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit, swearing. This is taking God's name in vain. When you say, you swear by God, you swear by heaven, you swear by this and swear by that, whatsoever it is you want to use to swear. Even you swear by the earth, the Bible says the earth is God's footstool. Number two, when you complain against one another, Romans 14, 12. You are using your tongue wrongly. It says, consequently, each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let no, let's no longer criticize each other. Instead, make up your mind not to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. Criticizing. You criticize your sister, you criticize your brother, you're full of criticism. You are using your tongue wrongly. It says, let's no longer criticize each other. But do what? Be of a blessing. Make up your mind that you will not be a stumbling block in the way of your brother. Number three, when you speak hypocritically, you're using your tongue wrongly. James 1, 26. If you think you are being religious but cannot control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and everything you do is useless. I didn't say it. It's the word of God that said it. If you cannot control your tongue, you say, I am religious, I am spiritual, but your tongue, you cannot put it in order. It's always speaking like this, speaking in that way, putting people at odds against one another. It says such a person, everything they do is useless. Number four, when you lie, you're using your tongue wrongly. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19. It says a false witness that speaks lies is amongst the people whom the Lord hates. There are uh, seven things or seven people that God does not like, but amongst them is also a lying tongue, a false witness. When you speak lies, you know it's not true, but you're speaking it. You're using your tongue wrongly. Number five, gossip. Proverbs 25, verse 23. It says, the north wind brings rain, and a backbiting tongue an angry look. Understand? We can gossip and poison each other's minds. There is the way you can begin to speak. You poison the minds of other people. This is a wrong use of the tongue. It is better you cover your brother, your sister. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not you see something negative in your brother, your sister. You are number one. You run everywhere. You stand on the rooftop. Please, everybody, come now. Hear what I have to say to you. Tail bearers, backbiters. This is the wrong use of the tongue. Hallelujah. And I say to us, when you are a gossiper in this way, your prayers will carry no power. If you preach the word, it will carry no power. Because life cannot come out from the same place where death is also coming out. You must keep the wellspring of God in your life clean and clear. And the way you do that is making sure you speak only the right words. Amen. Number six, and the last one. When we cast men, we are using our tongues in the wrong way. That is James chapter 3 and verses 9 to 12. We just read it. I want you to understand it. God does not want you to cast men. You cannot be blessing God, but you cast people. You call them all sorts of names. You speak all sorts of negativity concerning them. Yet you want to worship God. It's a wrong use of the tongue. Now, I speak to you five things that God wants you to use your tongue for and will come into prayer. Number one, God wants you to use your tongue to praise him. James chapter 3 verse 9. I'll just quickly say to you and we come into prayer. Number two. God wants you to use your tongue to pray to him. Jeremiah 33 and verse number 3. Number 3. God wants you to use your tongue 
to witness. Psalms 107 and verse number 2. It says, let those who have been redeemed by the Lord declare it, those whom he redeemed from the power of the enemy. When God has done something good in your life, he wants you to open your mouth and say, this is what God has done in my life. Witness. Speak about the goodness of the Lord. Tell other people about Jesus. Yes? Well, your tongue has been busy. Maybe you discover when it comes to gossip, you are number one. When people say, I have something to tell you. You settle down very fast. You get excited suddenly. Hallelujah. Do you know that excitement? Okay, you guys are not anywhere near gossip, my goodness. Holy people, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Leave the excitement and all those things that you get to hear from people and you get to tell them. Don't be a gossiper and don't receive the gossip as well. Hallelujah. If somebody, in fact, you should put it out completely. If somebody comes to tell you anything negative about anyone, look at them straight in the eye and tell them, come now, let's go to that person. We are going to square this matter right now. Amen? You will make sure that person will not use you as a channel of dumping gossip. Are you a channel of dumping? Are you a dumping ground? Ah. Tell them, if you have something good to say, speak it to me. If you have nothing good to say, don't say it to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Use your tongue to witness rather. Let it speak the word of God. Let it lead somebody back to Jesus. Instead of gossip, just do the gospel. That will be good for you. Number four. Use, God wants you to use your tongue to command situations and the kingdom of darkness. Job 22 and verse number 28. And also Matthew 18 and verse 18. And I believe also Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. Command situations. He wants you to use your tongue. There is something that is out of order. It needs to come back in order. Just open your mouth and speak to that situation. Speak to that problem. Command it. Speak to that mountain. Command it. Right now, our country is in a sort of turmoil and we don't even understand what's going on anymore it's a time for us to speak life to this nation speak deliverance to this nation speak redemption to this nation speak order to this nation amen as christians we cannot be part of what the people of the world are doing let's command the different thing let's change this nation can't get no amen there hallelujah somebody say there is work to be done your mouth was not just given for you to put food inside and eat and have stories and such like. It is a channel of power. Command. Command demons. Command powers in your own family. There are powers that are harassing your parents. They are harassing your siblings. They are harassing your children. Command them. Amen. It says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. So it's not your work to know how it will be done. It says you decree, God will do it. You decree, angels are waiting on your words. I spoke, there are some of us who are here, I teach you in a prophetic class. And I spoke in this way, I saw that the angels of God, anytime ministry is ready to get happen, I'll see. Sometimes, God will show me, the angels are standing, ready at attention. They are waiting to do things during that ministry session. But I saw as well, in fact, I wondered, why is it that the angels are not moving? And God began to reveal to me that anytime there's ministry, he will send his angels. But the angels cannot move except there's a word that comes out of my mouth. And I saw when I began to command, immediately the angels begin to do. They begin to move. They begin to organize things. They begin to break powers and such like. It is only when I speak the word. And God wants you to open your mouth. Because you have your angel. Say, I have my angel. Say it again, I have my angel. God has given you an angel. He's given some of you angels. They are ready to act in your behalf. They are standing by your side. That angel never leaves you. They go with you everywhere you go. Their task is to make sure your life is okay. Now that angel cannot do anything in your life. If you don't open your mouth and say, now I command, this thing it must break from my life. Now I command, this thing it must come into my life. When you speak in this way, two things or two persons. One, the Holy Ghost will act on your words. And two, the angels of God will act on your words. God wants you to command. 
Don't say who will save me. Your own tongue is your channel of salvation. That is enough. Number five and the last one. God wants you to use your tongue to set the course of your destiny. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Understand, your words are seeds. Say, my words are seeds. You need to sow them. You need to release them to set the course of your destiny. There are some things that God has spoken about you. And I'll give you an example. Right in the revival week that has ended, many of you received prophetic words from the man of God. Now, two things can happen. One, you sit and you say, now oh, this word, it is going into my documents or my file of prophetic words and you set it right there and you say, well, another prophetic word has arrived. Thank God. Hallelujah. That's one person. The second person can say, this word I have received, it must come to pass in my life. Now, because that word has given you a direction of where God is taking you, you say every day, I'll be speaking this word. I'll be commanding this word. God said this shall happen. This is what will happen. You move in the direction of the word. You speak the word. You act like the word. Then you will receive the word. Praise God. But if you say, I sit down. Now, look now, I have more prophetic words. This is more problem because nothing happens. You will not receive anything in your life. The prophet said, tomorrow by this time, this match will be sold for this. And that match will be sold for that. And the man who leaned on the king's hand said, if the Lord opened windows in heaven, can this thing happen? The prophet said, you will see it, but you will not have it. Hallelujah. Any word God gave you, believe upon it. Believe upon it. It says, Second Chronicles twenty twenty. Believe in the Lord your God, and it shall be established. Believe also in His prophets, and you shall prosper. The word shall come to pass. Any word, and it's not just the revival week. You have many words that God has spoken to you. That word is waiting to come to pass. But it is looking for a person who can say, I am confessing things in the direction of the prophetic word that I received in my life. Such a person. They will stand here to testify. They will say, the man of God said this thing, and look now it has happened. The man of God said this other thing, look now it has happened. That is what and who you should be. Praise God. It's time to pray. Rise on your feet where you are. I want you to raise your hands to heaven. And I want you to, right now, begin to focus on God. If you can avoid any movement, just focus on what God is doing right now. It will be good. And just raise your hands to heaven. And I want you to begin to search your heart and find out have I been walking in accordance to the word? Have I been using my tongue and speaking words that are according to the word? And I want you to surrender yourself to the Lord. I want somebody to begin speaking to God right now. I want somebody to begin telling God right now, Papa, it's time for my life to change right now. Maybe you realize so many negative words have been coming from you. You realize you've not used your tongue the way you should. You realize you basically almost say nothing from your mouth about your situation, about your life. Just surrender yourself to God right now. Come on, somebody, speak to heaven right now. And if somebody can repent before God, you realize I've been using my words to speak the, the wrong thing. You realize you've used it for lies. You realize you've used it to cast the lives of men. You realize you've used it to complain and criticize and such like. Just open your mouth where you are at right now and just begin to repent before the Lord. And I want everybody in this house, you never know where you've been speaking the idle word. But God can search your heart. Just ask the Lord to search your heart right now and show you, is there any place, anywhere, anytime, I spoke the wrong word. I've been using my tongue in the wrong way. Have I been that person who does not speak posit positivity? Come on, somebody, where you are right now. Ask God to search your heart. 
ask God to show you. And if you know where you've been drawn because your heart has been convicted as you heard this word, just begin to set order before the Lord. Tell him, Lord Jesus, this is where I know I've been drawn with my words. I've been speaking negatively about other people. I've been speaking negatively about my nation. I've been speaking negatively about my situation. But right now, I am here to repent. Come on, somebody, just open your mouth right now. Come on, somebody. You know you've been using your word in idle ways. You've been idly speaking. Just open your mouth and tell God, right now, Papa, I am repenting for speaking idly. I'm repenting of speaking blasphemously. I'm, I'm repenting, oh God, for every time I use my tongue in the wrong way. Just open your mouth where you are, somebody. I believe God is wanting to heal somebody's tongue. I believe God is wanting to do something new on somebody's tongue right now. And I believe God is wanting to change somebody's words right now. I believe somebody's destiny is changing today in this service because of what is about to happen in this house right now. Come on, somebody, where you are at right now, surrender to God. Surrender to him and tell him, Lord God, just begin now to renew my life. And if somebody can tell God, renew my tongue. And if somebody can realize I have been defiling my life, I've been defiling the lives of other people. I have been, Lord, speaking things that have been putting people at loggerheads, oh God. I've been putting people fighting against one another, oh God. I, I should have been the channel of healing, oh God. I, I've, been, I've been the person, oh God, who has been breaking relationships and connections in my life because I don't speak the right words, oh God. Somebody right now, just begin to speak to God. Ask him to purify your tongue. Ask him to purify your spirit right now. Any kind of defilement that has come to you, I need somebody who can tell God, my father, search my heart, search my life, wherever and whenever I've defiled my life. Let that defilement leave me right now. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Just raise your hands and surrender to God. Raise your hands to heaven and surrender to God. Just tell him right now, Papa, let the blood of Jesus begin to speak over my life. I believe God is wanting to renew somebody in this service. I believe God is wanting to change somebody's destiny in this service. I believe God is ready to restore somebody's tongue. He is ready to restore somebody's life. You realize that you've cast your life. You realize that other people, they've cast your life. But God is ready in this service to do something new in your life. I don't know who defiled you. I don't know who spoke watch you but God is ready just open your mouth and speak to him and tell him Lord I need you to purge my life I need you to purge my life I don't know who spoke that offensive word to you I don't know who came out to you and just release some negativity towards you just right now speak to God ask him Lord purge my heart purge my life I don't know what you've been carrying in you that other people deposited there I don't know who has dumped negative words to you I don't know who has dumped curses upon you but right now just open your mouth and tell God I I need you to purify my life. I need you to remove all these things out of my life. Come on, somebody, where you are at. If you realize you, you're the one who's been casting your life, you've been saying you have nothing, you've been speaking about sickness, about disease, you've been owning many, many problems in your life, you've been saying you cannot move forward, you've been saying your blessings are not manifesting, open your mouth and repent right now. Tell him, Lord Jesus, for every time I spoke to cast my own life, to cast my own blessings, to cast my own destiny, I am repenting right now. Come on, somebody. Somebody. Come on, somebody. God cannot send this word to you except there's something he wants to do in your life. The Bible says, my word shall not come to you in vain. It shall not go void. It says that it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the thing I sent it to do. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth where you are at right now. This word, it came to do something in your life. This word, it came to change your life. This word, it came to change your situation. It came to put order in your life. It came to break your yokes out of your life. It came to deliver your life. It came to usher you into a forward progression in your life. It came to do something new in your life. Come on, somebody. Somebody speak to heaven right now. Speak to heaven right now. Speak to heaven right now. If you know you've been fighting your prophetic word, I hear the Holy Ghost saying right now, begin to repent about it right now. Begin to repent about it right now because some of you can say some things you'll do in your life and when they did happen yet, you spoke negatively against the prophetic word. Open your mouth where you are at right now and begin to repent because of it. Because I see the Holy Ghost, He is ready to deliver you from every power that has been pulling you backwards and is ready to usher you into the manifestation of your destiny. Come on, somebody speak to heaven. Somebody speak to heaven. Karabana na 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 na
and I want you right now open your mouth where you're at and begin to prophesy right now begin to command right now begin to do the things that you've heard God saying in this service this is how I want you to use your tongue this is how I want you to speak this is how I want you to command I need somebody who's here in this service who is saying when I entered here there are some things that were not in order in my life open your mouth right now and begin to command those situations begin to bring change into that situation command that problem command that spirit command that situation right now command that mountain right now come on somebody open your mouth begin to prophesy begin to decree begin to create right now realize you are a creator realize your words they actually come to pass realize your words are self-fulfilling prophecies open your mouth right now and begin to prophesy begin to declare what's coming in your life I need somebody to create things that were not there create in your own family create for your own siblings create for your own parents create for your own husband your wife your children create right now for them create for your own self create things in your future decree what shall be understand what you speak God says as he's spoken in my hearing I will do it for you can God hear something from you this day can God hear something from your lips this moment open your mouth and speak it open your mouth and declare it God is waiting to fulfill what you speak he is waiting to confirm what you command come on somebody speak 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 and if you're here you are not feeling well step on this altar right now because something is about to happen in your life God is about to heal you right now come on somebody keep on prophesying I want everybody else prophesying if you're unwell step on this altar right now right now your healing is manifesting your healing is here come and take it now I need everybody else prophesy 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 and make declarations right now make declarations right now keep on prophesying keep on speaking keep on praying keep on commanding keep on declaring I command it right now every sickness every disease break now I say break now I say break now let it go I say release this life I arrest every assignment of infirmity. I arrest every assignment of sickness. As a break from this life. As a break from this life. As a break from this life. Lose and let it go. Fire in it. I said I send fire. I send fire. I send fire. Fire in it. Lose right now. Break by fire. Let it go. I said let it go. That's a fire on you. That's a fire on you. That's a fire on you. I arrest every assignment of infirmity. I command it now. Lose from this life. Fire! Fire! Come on, somebody, keep on prophesying. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. I'm the one who tell you to stop. Fire! I send fire seven times. I send fire seven times. I send fire seven times. I send fire. fire. Command it. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Loose from this life. Fire! 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 Let her go. I untie the life. I said untie. I lose the head. I lose it right now. I lose his head now. Was fire. Was fire. Was fire. Was fire. Was fire. Somebody keep on praying where you're at right now. Keep on praying where you're at right now. I need to pray with you. Was fire. Was fire. Was fire. I said untie this mind. I untie this head. Every grip, every hole divided upon this life. I said, devil, your time is over. Let it go. Lose and let it go. Lose and let it go. Break now. As a brick. As a brick. As a brick. Fire. 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 Ouch. Be healed right now. I release it. I release your healing right now. Yeah. That's the anointing on you. That's the anointing on you. Be healed. Yeah, that's power. Receive it. 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 Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I send the healing anointing right now. I command it in Jesus' mighty name. Total healing. Total restoration. Now, in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, it's done in your life. Raise your hands to heaven. There's a lady here, you've been having problems in your, in your reproductive system. If you're here, just come here. God is wanting to do something new in your life. I see some pains. God wants to set you free right now. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. If that is you, just come here. You've been having problems in your tummy. God is wanting to do something right now. If you're coming, come now because the Holy Ghost is here to do something in your life. Come on, somebody. Just raise your hands where you are right now. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, pray. I said fire. I said fire. I said fire. I said fire. Come on, somebody. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. I lose your life right now. I lose your belly right now. I command it in Jesus' name. Every arrow fired into that belly. You are uprooted from this life. Release her now. Every arrow fired into that belly. You are uprooted from this life. Release her now. Fire is on you. I send fire. I command it in Jesus' name. Every creepy vibe upon this life. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Fire. Fire. I say loose right now. That's the anointing on you, Lord of Zion. That's the anointing on you. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost where you are. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get tired. There's something God is doing in your life. There's something God is doing in this house. It must happen. It must be fulfilled. You must come forth from this place testifying and declaring. I've seen the hand of the Lord upon my life. Touch Holy Ghost. Fire in the name of Jesus. I command you be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. I said every grip they've had upon your life is broken right now. Let her go. Loose. Come out of this life. Come out. The pit. Out. Every serpent and spirit. I said you're broken now. Loose and come out. Fire. I said anointing on you. Receive your healing right now. I release it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Now, stand in the name of Jesus. Everybody raise your hands. If you're seated, stand up on your feet. Raise your hands to heaven. Raise your hands to heaven. I want to speak a confirmation of what you've been declaring right now. I want you to declare three things that must happen in your life right now. You've been saying many things, but I want you to go directly to three important things that must happen in your life. I want to release right now the anointing for those things to happen in your life. They must happen. They must happen. Just declare it. Speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your mouth. Speak it out of your mouth. The Holy Ghost is right where you are. The angels of God are right where you are. So it's time for them to manifest. Father, as your servant, I make the declaration according to the word that has come out from the mouth and from the lips of this your people. I decree, I send the power and the anointing of the Spirit. I command it in the name of Jesus. Let there be manifestation. Let there be manifestation right now. I speak it in Jesus' mighty name. Receive now everything you've commanded. Receive now everything you've requested. Receive now the power of the Holy Ghost. Ascend that anointing into your life. Ascend that anointing into your life. Ascend it upon your life. Receive everything you've commanded. Take it now. 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 I send the angels of the living God. I command it in the name of Jesus. Let right now transformation begin to take place in every department of your life. Every area of your life you've presented before the Lord. I command it in the name of Jesus. Let there be divine transformation from this moment. I command it right now. Let things begin to move in Jesus' name. I decree every one of you are trusting God for breakthroughs in your finances. They are released to you receive in the name of Jesus. I decree every one of you trusting God for salvation in your family. It's released, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for your jobs. They are released, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for your marriage. It's released, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for breakthroughs, breakthroughs in your ministry. I command it, it's released, receive it in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever it is, you trust in God. It must happen in your life. Receive now. Receive now. 
Receive now. Receive now. Receive now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, raise your hands where you're at right now. Begin blessing the Lord because I make the declaration. It's done in your life. There's some of you you are here. The Lord is showing me He's releasing new strength into you right now. God is renewing your strength. Young man, God is renewing your strength. Just raise your hands. I command it in Jesus' name. New strength, Lord. I release it. I release it. I release it. Power. Take it. Receive 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 it. That's the anointing of the Spirit. I command it in the name of Jesus. Touch Holy Ghost. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Every one of you where you're at right now, I decree, you've been weak in your walk with God. I command it right now. Receive a new strength. Receive new strength. I release it to you now, 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 now. I see the power of the Holy Ghost moving upon many of your bellies right now. And some of you can feel like a fire that is stirring in your belly. Everybody lay your hands on your belly right now. And I speak and decree as you lay your hands upon it. I release the power and the anointing of the Spirit. I command it in Jesus' name. Every assignment that has been withstanding you in your walk with God, it is cancelled and terminated in Jesus' name. I command it in Jesus' mighty name. Let there be forward progression right now. Receive a fresh grace now. Receive fresh anointing right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive divine empowerment. Power. Take it. Take it right now. Take it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, there's a lady you're here. You've been wondering what's going on in your life because for the past one week, you've been feeling like you're so much confused. God is showing me right now, as I'm speaking, that confusion is living your life. I decree I untie your mind in Jesus' name. In fact, you've been feeling like your mind is just getting tired, getting tired, getting tired. You don't understand where it's coming from. It's an attack from the pit of hell. I send the anointing of God upon your life. I command it in Jesus' name. Every confusion released against you. Let it break in the name of Jesus. I command total restoration in your life. Right now. Right now. I command it right now. Raise your hands to heaven. Father, thank you right now. As your servant, I decree. My goodness. Come on, somebody. Ask God for the anointing to speak the right things. Ask him to give you grace to speak the right things. God is wanting to do that for somebody in this house. You've been finding that every time you're repenting about sins you've committed with your own tongue, with your own mouth. Just ask him for that grace right now and ask him that he will set a guard at the door of your lips. You will not speak the wrong word. Ask him for that. This will guard your destiny. It will guard your life. It will guard your family. It will guard people who are around you. Ask him to put a guard in it, at the door of your mouth right now. Right now. Right now, right now, right now. The Holy Ghost is saying to me, is releasing that grace right now. You will not see that struggle with your mouth anymore. You will be able to take care of what comes out of your mouth. You will be constantly aware. You will be knowledgeable of the words that are coming from your lips. You will choose your words. You will not just speak, but your words will be chosen. Father, I speak it in Jesus' name. Raise your hands where you are at. I send the power of the Holy Ghost. I command it in the name of Jesus. Let there be grace of God. Your people, Papa, from today, I decree every power that has been sending them to speak the wrong word is broken. It is broken. It is broken. It is broken. I break it in the name of Jesus. I decree, Lord, right now, let the anointing flow on every man, every woman in this house. I decree power to speak the right words. Power to speak the choice words. I release it. My goodness, that's the anointing flowing right now. Where you are standing right now, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Father, bless his lives. I put the power of the Holy Ghost upon the lives of your people. I stand as your servant to declare, Lord, where any man, any woman stood to cast upon the lives of this your people, I stand as your authority, Papa, and I decree in the name of Jesus, the cast from the lives of your people, it is broken, it is broken, it is broken, it is broken. I command it, O oh God, no matter the authority that spoke negativity over your people, O oh God, I cancel the words and I command it in Jesus' name. Let 
every curse of limitation be broken now in the name of Jesus. I decree I release grace to move forward upon the lives of your people. I release grace to possess their possessions upon the lives of your people. I release grace, Jehovah God, to fulfill, oh God, and grace to receive, oh God, everything you promised to us as your people right now. May you receive it in your life. May you receive it in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare it in Jesus' name. The lives of this, your people, they are blessed. And no man can cast them. I decree, Lord, it is established. Come on, somebody, where you are at, raise your hands to heaven. Just begin to bless the Lord. Because I make the declaration. The things that are spoken upon your life, they are established. And they are done in your life. No one can change them. In the name of Jesus.